Today we're going to talk about the sprinkling of the blood. This subject matter is so lengthy and powerful that we are going to break this lesson up into two, one this week and one next week. Without a doubt, the blood of Jesus Christ is the greatest and the most precious gift our Heavenly Father has ever given to us, the church believers. And yet so few Christians fully understand the value and the virtue of Christ's sinless blood. That's very important. You see, the blood that flowed through the arteries and the veins of our Savior was sinless blood. His blood was royal. It was blood that he inherited from his Father, the Almighty God of the universe. Some of you here today may or may not have heard the old song, There's Power in the Blood. But if you've been around church for any length of time, you know that song has always been the anthem saying with great gusto in church services. We sang that song so many times in the church, I grew up that we knew it by heart. Lewis E. Jones wrote the song in 1899, over a hundred years ago, and it has stood the test of time, and we've been singing it ever since. Let's go over the lyrics together. First verse was, would you be free from your burden of sin? Well, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. The chorus says, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Verse 2, would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you, for cleansing to Calvary's side, there's power in the blood. Excuse me, come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide, there's wonderful power in the blood. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Then verse 4, would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. And then the chorus, there's power, power. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Did you know that most believers seldom ever really experience the power of that blood of Jesus Christ? Even though Christ has indeed given his precious blood, for the healing, deliverance, protection, salvation, and so many other benefits. There really is wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. However, it only kicks in and works when you wholeheartedly believe that it does. The age-old question is, when is the blood of Jesus applied for the salvation of our soul? Well, the blood is applied when you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess that he is the Lord of your life. But so many people simply do not comprehend the great significance of the sinless blood of Jesus. For example, they may plead the blood as some kind of mystical formula for protection, but very few Christians can explain the blood's great power, glory, and healing benefits. If I were to ask you what the power of of the blood means, you might answer. It means that my sins are remitted and that I am free from the bondage of iniquity and all my sins have been covered. And for all that, you would be telling the truth. However, beyond forgiveness, what does the blood of Jesus mean to you? Can you explain to me, to your family, to your co-workers, the value and the virtue of the blood of Jesus? I hope that by the end of the lesson today, you will have a fuller understanding of the preciousness of the blood of Jesus and how it can work wonderful changes in your life as well as others. 
So let's take a deep dive today. In the Bible, the blood is spoken of in two ways. There's the shed blood and the sprinkle blood. Most Christians know about the blood that Jesus shed for the salvation of human souls. When Jesus lifted the chalice at the last Passover, he explained the cup of salvation. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. He was using the cup of wine to represent what he was getting ready to do for them and us on Calvary's hill. His blood flowed or was shed on the cross. Also, one of God's irrevocable laws is that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The innocent must die for the guilty. The problem was no human was without sin until Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The reason is we inherited our sinful blood from our great-great-grandpappy Adam. This principle was revealed all through the Old Testament with innocent animals that had not sinned yet had to die for people who had sinned. Now Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, was preparing to shed his sinless blood for the sins of the entire world. His sinless blood was redeeming, which means buying back sinful lost souls. Remember and memorize his sacrifice and shed blood every time we have communion and renew our faith in him. But that's the limit of most Christians' knowledge of Jesus' blood. We know only about the blood being shed for us, but there is more. His blood was also sprinkled for us. The Bible says, To Jesus, the mediator of a new sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. You may have never noticed that part of the scripture before, but I want us to take note of it today. It is gloriously pictured in a church built for unity. It is unfathomable for us with our human minds to grasp the awesomeness of a church gathered in worship and study of God's word. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. Wow! Can you imagine that? Every time we gather together to worship and to study God's word, he is right there with us in that room. The writer of the book of Hebrews described a church setting like this. He said, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Wow, all that is happening when we gather together. You see, Jesus is the go-between for the establishment of the new covenant God has made with every believer. This is the picture we see in this verse. Jesus reaches up to the hand of God and down to the hand of man and binds them together in a spiritual handshake or agreement called a covenant. This new covenant is confirmed by the blood of Christ sprinkled upon our conscience as the blood of the sacrifice was sprinkled upon the altar of sacrifice as atonement for sin. The shed blood of Christ pacifies God, and the sprinkled blood purifies the conscience of the believer. The sprinkled blood of Christ is speaking blood, and it speaks better things than that of Abel. It speaks to God on behalf of sinners. It pleads not for vengeance, as the blood of Abel did on him who shed it, but for mercy. Remember the story of Cain and Abel? Abel's blood, after Cain had killed him, cried out for somebody to pay. But Christ's blood, after he died, cries out, somebody has already paid. The sprinkled blood speaks to sinners for God. It speaks pardon to their sins, 
peace to their souls, and it calls all of us to the strictest obedience and the highest love and thankfulness. It speaks not from the ground as the blood of Abel, but it speaks from heavenly places where Jesus ever lives, always speaking, always making intercession for our souls. Another thing I want you to notice is that according to the text, the sprinkled blood is the voice of the new dispensation of grace. Observe that on Mount Sinai, there was the bombastic voice of God, which voice they heard that was so boisterous that it scared them half to death. They said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us or we will die. Now we come to this new grace dispensation. The grace dispensation that we live in today where people are always looking for an audible voice from heaven and most of the time, thank God, it does not come. If it did, it would scare you to death. However, because we can't hear the audible voice of God, we get discouraged. We do not understand that the voice of God today is not like the voice of someone standing in front of you speaking. It is the sprinkle blood, God's word that is constantly speaking. So listen closely to the voice of the gospel. It is not the voice of a trumpet, nor the voice of words spoken in terrible majesty, but it is the blood of Jesus Christ, the word who forever speaks from his eternal holy word we call the Bible. And assuredly, there is no sound more piercing, more powerful, more potent, more prevailing than the precious sprinkled blood of Jesus Christ that speaks to us from his holy word. Isaiah 66 and 5 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Yes, he's always speaking. But when we seek for relationship with him, he opens our heart, our mind, will, and emotions. In other words, our soul. To all that he is, he is willing to open our ears and our entire being to the sound of his voice. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. His blood is always speaking. I remember when my granddaughter Meadow was little, I used to play with her by flipping a little water in her face. She loved it, and she would start smiling and laughing. I think that's the same way it is with us. We pick up the word, or we hear it preached, and it is like sprinkles of glory that brings a smile to our face and puts a twinkle in our eyes and joy in our hearts. This precious blood speaks better things than that of Abel's blood. Abel's blood cried for justice. The blood of Jesus proclaims freedom, liberty, and deliverance. The Bible is alive. Why? Because blood flows throughout its pages. What is the sprinkled blood saying to us today? I want to sprinkle a little blood from the Bible scriptures on you today. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to get sprinkled? Here's the word. Let it sprinkle you with the blood of Jesus today. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Powerful. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness and by whose stripes you were healed. Now, here's a biggie. This is called the great exchange, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, he knew no sin, he had sinless blood flowing through his veins to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Powerful. The voice of the blood is still speaking. So get your eyes off the man of God and open your mind's eye in the spirit and see the sprinkled blood spewing out of the mouth of God as he speaks life-changing words to you right out of the Bible. When you come to church, are you ready to get showered? 
when you read your Bible and your daily devotions? Are you ready for God to sprinkle you with love, power, and insight? How many have ever heard the celebrity showman called Gallagher? He's dead now, but when he was alive, he made an enormous amount of money on a tool called the Sledgeomatic. People would pay top dollar for front row seats at one of his shows to get showered with smashing watermelons or any other foods that could be smashed all over the place. What really gets me is that people paid big money for front row seats and then they would cover themselves with plastic sheathing so they wouldn't get drenched in the juices that flowed from the sledgeomatic. Oh, yes. People will pay big bucks to get showered with watermelon juice, but won't open their Bibles to get drenched with the Holy Ghost soaking. Come on, man. We need to open our Bibles daily and come early to church for front row seats to be showered with God's Word, which can transform our dead, dull lives into fountains of living water. I remember people telling me that when they sat on the front rows of our church, While I was preaching, they sometimes got hit with some spittle from my robust, enthusiastic yelling at the top of my lungs preaching. I tried to prevent it by having a stack of handkerchiefs nearby. I would carry one around with with me while I was preaching and continually wipe my mouth. But one time I got so excited, I threw the handkerchief deep into the crowd. Somebody caught it and I said, you're the winner. Come on down. You're the next contestant to receive your reward, the gift of salvation. (laughs) Just joking about that last part, but we had some great times and great laughs in the house of God. Again, the writer of Hebrews said, Hebrews 10, 17, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. But there's more. He says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, and that is his body. Now, are you ready for this next scripture? This one is really powerful. You need to fasten your seatbelt so you probably won't be able to contain yourself as I read this next scripture. You might have to get up out of your chair and dance a jig for Jesus. Here we go. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled, notice, our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from what? From a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, For he who promised is faithful. You realize that's what happens every time that we sin? The first thing that Satan gets us to to commit a sin or to omit, whichever, and then he gives us a guilty conscience about what we do or don't do. But the Bible teaches us that the sprinkled blood of Jesus is to cleanse us from that guilty conscience. We must remember that we have had our bodies washed with pure water. We have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And we do not have to worry about sin anymore. We have been delivered. Does that give us license to sin? Of course not. But we have been delivered from it. When we make a mistake or when we fall, there is power in the name of Jesus and power in the blood of Jesus. Let's read this last verse again from the New Testament, from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says, let us hold tightly. That's the Bible. Hold on to the Bible without wavering. Hold on to God's word so tightly that the devil can't pry your fingers loose to the hope we affirm. We're constantly telling others about the glorious hope of the believers. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Hold on to your Bible. Hold on to it with both hands and don't let it go. Read it every day. Take it with you wherever you go. And never let go of the hope and the promises that God has written down in his love letter to us. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and take you to be with me, that where I am you may be also. Hold tightly to that promise 
that Jesus gave us before he went back to heaven. Jesus will return very soon to take his bride, his church of believers, home to live with him in heaven. So this completes the first half of our lesson on the sprinkling of the blood, and we'll continue it next week. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and it has been a blessing to you. I'm Michael Hopper, pastor of Victory Tabernacle Community Church in Fresno, California. Our congregation meets every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. If you would like to attend one of our services, please call me at 559-575-2984 for directions. Also, if you would like more information, you can visit us on our website at www.vtabernacle.com. If you would like to help support this ministry financially, there's a Give button on our website. All giving will be greatly appreciated. God bless you and keep you and make His face shine on you and give you peace.